1100 cubic inches. That's how large an engine a tank crew needs to operate a Sherman safely and reliably. Initially, Ford had not considered building a V8. Hence the design is like no other, but it quickly became one of the all-time favorite US Army engines. During its time, the Ford GA was the largest gasoline V8 ever made. Let's take a look at how did it even begin. During World War I, Ford had quite a bit of experience with war engines, being manufacturer of a Liberty aircraft 12-cylinder. That being said, it was known that the conflict would not come down and that the army will need workhorses for an extended amount of time. Henry was keen on being a part of it and attempted to license the Rolls-Royce Merlin. However, as Packard already had it, Henry came home empty-handed and proposed an original design similar to the Rolls-Royce Merlin V12 engine to US government. Being sure of getting the contract, they even began preparing the manufacturing line, but the unexpected happened. Nothing wrong with the design, only that the officials already had an Allison V12 in their hands, men trained to work on it, and countless parts around. Ford's dream of an aircraft power plant faded away. Henry knew the army would need engines, he just did not pick the right application. The Sherman series was about to come out and the engine lineup was not viable. A Continental R975 was an underpowered aircraft air-cooled Radial 9 that eventually was even short of supply. A twin Detroit 671 unit was of a completely new, untested design, being a bit more reliable than the Continental, and a Chrysler Multibank was a fairly reliable 30-banger though a disaster to repair. While the Air Corps and Navy were fine with what they had, the government approached Henry saying, look, we don't need another aircraft V12, but we do need a good tank V8. Lucky for them, the V12 concept was pretty much finished and basically good enough to recycle. The platform was very advanced for its time and was designed to outperform the Merlin. This meant that the V8 inherited all those fancy features and the Ford GA became a true engineering marvel in the 1940s, boasting a healthy volume of 18 liters. A V8 promised a simple architecture to work on, and large cylinders of 137 by 152 millimeters provided proper performance. In fact, it made 525 horsepower at 2600 RPM and over 1000 pound feet of torque pretty much from idle. With a length of 5 feet and height of 4 feet, it was a proper piece of an engine. It no longer was an aircraft power plant, but all those castings were still made of aluminum alloys. A short skirt block was of an unconventional but then innovative one-piece casting reinforced all around. The crankshaft was held in place by two bolt 5 main caps. The heads featured twin cams and everything was gear driven. Durability and serviceability played a major role in the development. The V-angle of 60 degrees remained, and so the engineers had to either compromise on vibrations by the odd fire or crankshaft stiffness by offsetting crank pins. They went the first way and made both the mains and rod journals hollow. The crank tipped the scales at 135 pounds and interestingly featured a 180 degree flat plane crankshaft with an odd fire of 60, 120, 60, 120, 60, 120, 60, 120 degrees. The vibrations were dampened by a 150 pound heavy flywheel and a 175 pound heavy twin disc floater plate. It even received two 4 cylinder magnetos and the total weight settled at 1500 pounds. Since no belts or chains were adapted, all the pumps, fans, generators and other accessories were gear or shaft driven. Heads featured a true double overhead cam setup acting directly onto buckets 
actuating four valves per cylinder. The two Stromberg carburetors were each placed at the engine sides, which caused a fuel delivery imbalance with leaner middle and richer outer cylinders. Six head starts per cylinder secured adequate head sealing. The engine had a 2600 RPM speed governor, but tank crews learned how to disable it when they got into a dangerous situation. Amazingly, the GAA would still pull up to 3800 RPM, around which valve flood would occur. Of course, it would not get up to such speeds without those great flowing twin cam heads. Despite minor design flaws and imperfections, the GA was exceptionally reliable, which it managed to manifest in numerous marathon trials. It was capable of over 2000 miles or 255 engine hours per vehicle, and its fuel efficiency was also much greater than any other Sherman gasoline engine. Each version of the Sherman used a very different power plant, and although each had its own strong sides and weak points, the Ford GA was the Army's favorite. While the multibank was just as reliable, the ease of repair was unmatchable on the GA, and the power level was beyond 30 cylinders reach of 370 horsepower. A few other variants were made as well, such as the GAN, GAF, and a 750 horsepower 12 cylinder GAC workhorse for the T29 heavy tank. The GAA served well during and even after the war and later got in hands of civil people too. Only then the world got to know what potential the GAA hides. Low four figure output is not a big amount to ask from it and with upgraded pistons, direct injection and valve springs, a 4-inch twin turbo will squeeze over 2000 horsepower out of it. They were so capable that in the 1950s they received a ban from drag strips. Today, tractor pulling teams get about 5000 horsepower from a GAA, but obviously only for a limited period of time. The GAA is one piece of a genius engineering from Ford, and definitely a beautiful power plant to remember from the past. Thank <laughs> you.